And today's experiment is that we're going to prepare 2-chloro-2-methylbutane, or some people call that isoamyl chloride. Um, the procedure, really, we're using mainly a separatory funnel to carry out most of the procedure today. What I have here is 10 milliliters of the 2-methyl-2-butanol, and we're going to add to that 25 milliliters of concentrated hydrochloric acid. This is a type of SN1 reaction where we can take a, typically a tertiary substrate, in this case the alcohol, and we're going to combine it with hydrochloric acid. And what happens is that we protonate the OH group. It's a great leaving group when it becomes water. Once the water leaves, then the chloride ion from the HCl can come in and attack that carbocation that's formed. So once we go through the procedure of mixing the, the alcohol, the tertiary alcohol with the high, uh, concentrated hydrochloric acid, then we'll go through a series of washings using the separatory funnel. And then at the very end, what we will do is test our product to see if it does contain a chloride group and also is it a tertiary substrate. So the first thing I wanna do is add, make sure my stopcock is closed. We're going to add our 10 mils of the alcohol. And then we will add our concentrated hydrochloric acid. And again, be careful with the concentrated hydrochloric acid. And initially what we want to do is just kind of swirl this without the stopper for about a minute. So I'm just going to kind of swirl it a little bit. About, and I don't have to worry about venting since it is open to the atmosphere here. So just kind of swirl it for about a minute. been about a minute I'm going to put in the stopper and again always make sure you grease the stoppers that you're using inside your separatory funnel. Again if you don't it's very likely that some of the liquid when you invert it will actually spill out. So I'm going to swirl a little bit, bend. I'm going to swirl a little bit, shake. And now what I need to do is just kind of shake it for about five minutes, venting in between. here. One is the organic and one is the aqueous acid. So if I'm looking at the acid, there's two ways I can go about determining which layer is organic and which one's the acid. One way, we could look up densities of these substances. If you find the density of the starting material and also the product, the 2-methyl-2-butanol, which is our reagent, organic reagent and organic product is the 2-chloro-2-methylbutane, you will find that their densities are less than water. So, but just to kind of go through that test tube test again, I think that is very useful. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to 
remove the stopper. And I'm going to take some of the top layer. Add it to the test tube. And then I'm going to add water to that. And if I see two layers, then that means the top layer cannot be the aqueous. It must be the organic. And you can see that there are two layers. So what does that tell me? That tells me that the top layer is the organic. Now you could test that each time you do an extraction, but since everything we're gonna be extracting it with is aqueous base, there's really no reason to do that. But if there's ever any doubt, you can always do this test tube test. And the nice thing about the test tube test is that I never lose my material because I can pour it right back in there and the layers will separate like they should. So what I want to do first is to drain off because I don't want to wash the aqueous with anything. I want to wash the organic layer. So what I have to do is drain off the aqueous. In this case, we realized it was on the bottom. I'm going to raise this up just a little bit. so I can put my flask. I went ahead and labeled these flasks so there's no confusion. So this is the aqueous acid, which is this bottom layer. And then I'm gonna drain this. Until the layer gets almost flush with the white stock pot. Again, never throw any fraction away that you're collecting. I'm just going to push that to the back. 